This gentleman's uh, actually a personal friend of mine. He uh, just moved back from New York. He travels all over the country doing stand-up. Uh, since he's back in Fort Wayne, he's actually played out at Snickers quite a few times. This being our last show for a while, we thought we'd have him out. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, Mr. Scott Dunn. Scott! <laughs> When I was out in New York, they had an ad campaign out there for teenage girls who didn't want to have sex called Not Me, Not Now. I never got that, you know? Because when I was in high school, girls pretty much just said, not you, not ever. <laughs> yeah. You've been there, huh? Sure. But I'm back in Fort Wayne. Now, I like Fort Wayne, but you know what I've noticed? There are some very tense drivers in Fort Wayne. Am I lying? Yes. You know I'm not lying. I was behind a car that had a bumper sticker that said, honk if you love Jesus. You know, so I blew my horn. You know, first time I ever had a Christian tell me to blow it out my ass. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, and everybody's so self-conscious about their weight here, too. I was standing in line at Pizza Hut, and this fat hostess walks up to me, and she goes, sorry about the weight. I said, well, it's not going to make me lose my appetite, but, <laughs> but you got to be happy with how you look, right? Yeah, now you can, yeah, my only exception to that is this right here. If you're not a good looking girl, I don't want to see your tattoo, okay? <laughs> right, have you been there? Look, it's a butterfly, it's a butterfly. No, it's your ass, cover it up. <laughs> uh. But I'm 26 and single. You know, that's a pretty good life. Other than this, all my friends are getting married and having kids. That's when everything changes, isn't it? My best friend from college says he doesn't even want to be around me anymore when I'm drinking. I mean, come on. You puke on a guy's baby one time. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one time, that's all. I, uh, I made up my mind I'm not going to get married until I get a girl pregnant. That's what I've decided. Huh. You know, I know that's not perfect, but it's the one tradition my family has left. And I think, there you go, there you go. Mm. Speaking of which, I had sex last week, so I'm on my way. Yeah. You laugh at that, thank you. Now, I, this is a direct quote. Oh my God, you're huge. No, which was a little embarrassing, you know. I still can't believe I said that. I really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get it out of there. No. That was awkward. That's all. I think the most awkward situation I've ever been in with a girl is one time I've been drinking a lot. You know, a lot. And I spent the night. Yeah, thank you. A lot. And I, okay. And I spent the night at her house. You ever had that dream? You're going to the bathroom. Yeah, that dream, right there, right there. What do you do there? I mean, what do you, do you stay, do you go? If you go, do you leave a note, you know? Sorry I wet your bed, call me. Is that what you do? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> I've been hanging out at the Glenbrook Mall lately. Wow. Is that, guy, is that where you guys put your bad kids when the prison gets full? Is that the Glenbrook Mall? I saw a kid with a baseball hat with a marijuana leaf on it. Yeah! You know, I don't think anything says winter quite like that marijuana hat, huh? Yeah. My advice to that kid is take it off before the job interview, you know? <laughs> right. I, I just don't see any prospective employers saying, yeah, I think we're going to go with that young, ambitious pot smoker. <laughs> I think he'd do a nice job. But in fairness to this guy right here, I don't think marijuana should be illegal, right? It's a, no, I mean, it's a plant, it grows natural. I mean, uh, yeah, I grew up on a farm and we actually had some growing wild behind our house, you know, which as a kid was great, you know. Well, <laughs> seriously, seriously. Late at night, I could always hear deer just laughing their asses off out there. <laughs> yeah. You know, we didn't even know it was back there until we accidentally bailed some of the hay for our horses. Yeah, we knew we had a problem when our horse had taken his water bucket and made a bong at that point. 
I'd never seen a horse play hacky sack before. I really hadn't. <laughs> Some of you got that. I have a friend who says if marijuana gets legalized, he's going to market marijuana brownies. See, I don't, think that's a, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Because I just can't imagine a commercial with the Pillsbury Doughboy going, <laughs> that's good stuff. I, yeah. not going to work. He's going to get high. Half an hour later, he's going to get the munchies, eat himself. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I went back and saw my parents. It is amazing how much differently they remember my childhood than I do. My mom's like, what do you mean? We weren't overprotective. I'm like, mom, you had me connected to the invisible fence. You know? Seriously. The neighbors thought I was retarded. Can I play? Bzzz, ah! you know? All right. That. First day of school, I missed the bus. I just stood in the yard going, ah! yeah. So the second day, they sent a shorter bus to come pick me up. There's no way I was getting on that bus, huh? I figured the voltage had to be tremendous inside of there, right? Uh, maybe not, okay. <laughs> I had a rough childhood, too. My mom refused to breastfeed me as a baby. Yeah, so I was forced to drink goat's milk. You know, which tasted okay, but boy, were those nipples hairy. I'll tell you that right now. Huh. I, I think it screwed me up. First time I ever made out with a girl, I went, Mah! Thanks a lot. I'm Scott Dunn. Thank you very much. Scott Dunn, gang.